Hallelujah. Because we want God to bless us. Amen. But at the same time, we don't have the heart to serve God. Amen. We want God to really heal us. But at the same time, we are not even planning to come back and thank God. So this is the issue we have in the church. I'm crying and I'm, I'm crying and crying and crying. And at the same time, when people get healed, they don't even come back. They don't even come back. Because they are, they, they are thinking about what to get. And they are not thinking about the heart of God. Is for your heart to be changed. For your heart to be like the heart of Jesus. That's why we are here. So if we have really surrendered ourselves to Jesus, you have, you'll be zealous. You have zeal according to knowledge. You allow God to take possession of your life. That's what he wants. That's why he said you, we have to submit to him as our Lord, as our what? Savior, as our what? As what? As the master of our lives. Because he's the master of all masters. He has what? He has mastered everything concerning our lives. Concerning this nation, concerning this world, he has mastered everything. But God expects us to trust him as our what? As our, as our, as our master. Ha! So if we surrender our lives to Jesus, we have to have a what? Strong desire for God. You are going to see God. You are going to the house of God. And you are distracted. You went somewhere else. Preparing to come to church and you didn't even set your alarm. Hallelujah. Have the person surrendered? No. Somebody was telling me last week, the person came at 12 o'clock after we finished. And I said, what happened? He said, I forgot, I didn't set my alarm. People of God, if we surrender, God is looking at our heart. Is it genuine? Are we really want to serve him? Wholeheartedly. So surrender means what? We give ourselves completely. We agree to forego. Especially, you know, when we, you know, we are trying to do what? Favor God. That's why we surrender. It's all about what? Us using, God using us for his own agenda. To give oneself up. Amen. Into another. Amen. To be captured by God. For our hearts to be what? Captured by God. So the first thing God wants us to do is to acknowledge it. Amen. Can we look at that? Mark chapter 8, verse 24. I'm going to go very fast. I have so many points here, up to 10 points. Amen. Just to let, let us know that uh, we're going to see the benefits of, you know, you know, if, you, if, we are, if we surrender to God, amen, and then we're going to see why we have to surrender. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we look at the first point to acknowledge God? Mark chapter 8, verse 34. It says, when he had called the people to himself, you know, and his disciples also, he said to them, whosoever desires to come after me, let him what? Deny himself. Now, people of God, have, you, have we denied ourselves? Amen. Because if we have so many things that we are enjoying, amen, that means we, are not, we have not what, surrendered. We are occupied with all these things, and God is the last thing on our list. Aren't we going to heaven? He said, take up his cross and what? Follow me. And he said, whosoever desires to save his life will lose it. So no matter how we are desperate to keep this life, we're just wasting our time. Yeah. If you are desperate to lose this life and you are desperate for God, God says, you know what? Even people are praying for God to kill them. Just praying in, in fasting and saying, you know what? If you don't empower me, just kill me. I mean, they refuse to eat and drink. He said, you know what? If I have to die, let me die until you empower me to do this work. And I see here, standing in the pulpit, it's not just a standing here and be preaching word. If I'm not praying, it's a waste of time. Because we want the message to go smoothly. But if there's no prayer involved, people of God, we are just in a club. We are just entertaining what? The flesh. <sighs> 
Shall we continue? He said, what, prof- what will, will it profit a man if he gains what? The whole world and loses his own soul. This is the issue that we are really helping and crying before God for people to turn back to God. Because people are trying to gain the whole world. What are you going to do with all this? I mean, people that gain the world, after they gain everything, they were not happy. So our problem is not money. It's not what we are pursuing. What we are looking for is God. And the Bible says, what will a man ex- you know, give in exchange for what? His soul. So we are trading our soul for, for, to receive what? To receive God in our lives. Amen? He said, what, you know, what, and, and it says, for whoever is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him, the son of man also will what? Be ashamed when he comes. In the glory of his father when he, and with, the, with the holy angels. And he just said, Amen. Amen. Now, the second point here, we need to really examine our hearts. Isaiah chapter 23, verse 13. It says, uh, Isaiah 29, verse 13. It says, Therefore the Lord says, Inasmuch as these people draw near with their mouths and honor me with their what? Leaves but have removed their hearts far from me. And their fear towards me is taught by the commandments of men. Hallelujah. We think we, our heart, we need to examine this. Is our heart for God or is your heart for something else? So God wants to see the motive of the heart. You know, are you really moved? Are you really you know, uh, concerned about the things of God? Are you willing to go forth, amen, to have his heart, to please what is in the heart of God? Because there's so many things that we want to accomplish in this life that we'd rather put God aside and be pursuing those things. That's really sad. And when that thing fails, we begin to cry and say, we don't know. I mean, we are hearing this over and over, over and again. We always, you know, try to put our word, our priority first, and we put God last. Especially when God has really blessed you through the church, and then you engage in something else, and you forget about the things of God. This is very common. Hallelujah. Because we think we can do it without God anymore. So we have to what? Surrender our lives to him. Means that something you got to give up. we got to give up all these things, amen, that we can enjoy him. Amen? Yes. Hallelujah. The third point is what? Uh, to do what the Spirit is saying. Amen? To do what the what? The Spirit is saying. The Spirit is always talking to us. Amen? John chapter 6, verse uh, uh, 63. It's the Spirit that gives life. The flesh profits nothing, but the word that I speak to you, they are what? Spirit and life. You know, the way God created us, he created us, is we have three parts, three you know, uh, compartments, the body, the soul, and what? The spirit. This, the body has three parts. The body has what? Uh, the body has the flesh, it has the blood, and the bones. Amen? The soul has what? Three parts. It has what? The emotion... The will and what? The imagination. The spirit has what? Three parts. It has what? Knowledge, communication, and what? Conscience. So the Lord is always speaking to us through our conscience. Amen? Because when we expect God to speak to us through this, (laughs) you say you hear God through, that's not God you're hearing. Maybe it's your neighbor. Amen? He speaks to our conscience. (laughs) He speaks to our conscience, amen, hallelujah. And he's always communicating with us through signals, amen, hallelujah. And at the same time, we have to receive knowledge, and the knowledge goes into our spirit, amen. Amen. That's why, you know, when you have the word of God in you, you'll be driven by your spirit, because the word is where? In your spirit, man, Amen. amen. And if you don't have the word of God in your spirit, man, you'll be driven by the flesh, 
That's why we see believers. They, are not, they don't have the word. They have no surrender to God. So they are driven by what? By the flesh. Because the flesh is telling you what to do. But you, what you are doing is contrary against the commandment of God. It's not even close to the commandment. Hallelujah. It's not close to the commandment. Because when you look at the commandment, God came and gave us a new commandment. You know the new commandment that you have is different from the old commandment. Do you know that? How do you know? The new commandments that we have is different from what? Okay, John chapter 15. Oh, people of God. We think we are, we, we are surrendered. You have not. Some of us have surrendered. But some people, they have not. Say, Lord, help me. I mean, the Lord came here. I mean, I will share all that. And people did not show up the following service. I cannot believe it. I was in shock. So even if he comes physically and say, I'm Jesus, guess what? Because the heart is not there. The heart is not there. That's why the Lord says when the rapture comes, one will be taken, one will be left. No matter how you cry, because you refuse to prepare yourself. If you miss the rapture in this church, I even tell God, let me go and really deal with the person. Because that means all the messages I've been saying, you are not interested. Nobody should miss the rapture in this church. And God is looking for what? For us to have what? The right character. That's the only way you can miss the, make, make what? The rapture. If you have what? The right character. Because the word of God is to transform us to be like Jesus. So if we are fighting this, how are you going to reflect? How are you going to stand before God if you have no, none of his traits in you? You carry the Bible, but you are not even interested in reflecting what you are receiving. Say, Lord, have mercy. I've seen a lot of people, they just want to get healed, and when they are healed, they don't come back. So what am I going to do? John chapter 15. Now I'm jumping my note now. So praise God. Are we in John? Yes. <sighs> Hallelujah. John, uh, John 15, are we in 15? Yes. 12. Let's read it. And it's a greater love. And the child said, now let's go to 13, 34. John 13, 24. That can really help us. Amen. Hallelujah. John 13, 34. It says a new command. Can we say a new commandment? It says a new commandment I give you. That you should, you what? You love one another. It's a new commandment. So if God gave us a new old commandment and said love God with all your heart. And love your neighbor. Now he's telling us a new commandment. It's not a new commandment. And God says we have to love her like Jesus loved. People of God. Our job is to love everybody. If I hear you say you cannot forgive. That means you don't believe your Bible. You have no clue what you are doing. Because if you are not forgiving. You are not going to heaven. You know there's a lady that we walked here for six months. Every time I'm preaching, she's always saying, Pastor, you're going to come to me again and say, forgive. As I'm coming to her, you remember that lady? We'll be pleading for her to forgive. She will not forgive. Until, you know, Sister Blanca just came from nowhere. And she said, the, your problem is to forgive. And that was it. That fixed the whole thing. And she never came back. She went back to her church. Because every time after the service, she'll be disturbing us, telling me all kinds of stories. What the person did. 
See, what the person did, they took our money, they, you know, all kinds of problems. They're repeating the same story to, to, to justify our case. And she said, Pastor, I'm not ready. When she heard that, she went back to, to the lady at the church, the elder that took her money, that she wouldn't you know, give her the whatever. Okay, so she would tell me, I was tired of hearing the story. She came back joyfully, so much excited. She was so excited. She bought us fans. She bought us all kinds of things. Wow. She brought so many things. And she's never, she, she, was, she was totally healed and free because she was. She forgave. If you are not forgiven, it's like you drown poison and you want other people to die. That's what you are doing to yourself. Because the person does not even aware that, that you are offended. People of God, let's wake up and live according to the word. Mm. Ah, there was a lady. Forget about this note. There was a lady. And I'm helping you. Because this life that we are living, what is happening right now? You will not be moved if you, are, if you understand the principles of the kingdom. All these problems that we are having all over the world, God sees all these things coming. So if God is not shaking, now if God is not surprised by what happened in Ukraine, because you want God to come down and do it and show himself that I'm God. He said there will be war in where? Nation will be what? People of God, we just started. You haven't seen anything yet. So for you not to be shaken, you have to be in Christ. People of God, you have to have what? The nature of Christ has to be formed in you. This is the time for us to be desperate for God. That you have what? A genuine relationship with God. That's the only way we can stand. I was watching this lady. I was, I was even jealous of her. I'm telling you the truth. The lady had a bad, you know, you know, Sid Roth, you know, uh, it is supernatural. I mean, I don't watch movies. I watch the things of the kingdom because that's where I'm going. All this movie thing, I'm not interested. If you give me a movie, you are, I'm bored. I was jealous about this lady because she had a bad, you know, uh, what do you call it, childhood. And the Lord took her to heaven and the Lord was really having a fun with her, dancing and, you know, enjoying Jesus. And all of a sudden, the lady was in church. She lifted up his hands and worshiping God. The Lord sucked her from the church, prison, prison to hell. You, what, you saw it? The Lord took her to hell because she refused to forgive her husband. She came back to the church. The Lord, first of all, removed the memory that she was in the church, praising, praising God. She lifted up her hands, worshiping God, and if she landed where? In hell. Because she refused to what? Forgive. If you don't forgive, you are not going to heaven. Because your angels has already written it down that you are not following the instructions of God. For me, like my wife, I'm upset with her. The Lord will make sure, not even the Lord, now I realize it was the angel. It will make sure that I will not sleep the whole night. You are blessed. You are sleeping. You, need, you didn't forgive. You refuse to forgive what you are sleeping. But me, I will not sleep the whole night. Oh, that's good. You're supposed to be praying for me. What do you mean that's good? <laughs> mm, ha! People of God, let's teach people the right thing. Don't let us be teaching people nonsense. Let's teach people the right word of God. The lady was catapulted, sucked to to, to hell. When she came back, she was shivering. Like like people, you know, people that are worshiping God in the church because they showed us how the thing happened. They rushed to her. They were asking her what happened. Because they saw she was what? Terrified. The Lord has to deal with, she did not deal with this lady that, you know, you are upset with your husband and you are, you are, you are singing hallelujah. What kind of hallelujah you are singing? That's why the Bible says we have to know him in the power of his resurrection. In what? In the fellowship of his suffering. 
People will see when you suffer in this life and you forgive, you are you just what? You will experience what Jesus experienced on the earth. Because God will tell you, like, you'll be looking at you, say, I went through the same thing. What's wrong with you? Come out of it. He could not go to heaven until he forgave. He had to forgive Judas. He forgave the, the, the people that spat, spat on him. He forgave, help me. He forgave the people that came and ate all the people that, 5,000 people, family, they ate the bread and fish. They didn't come back and defend him. He forgave Peter. He forgave everything. Before you can go to heaven, you have to forgive. He said, Father, forgive them for they do not what? Know what they are doing. That's our attitude. That one is not, see, God is not, he's not putting it there for you to just read it. It's for us to live by it. You know, if you don't believe that, there's another movie I will show you. Lazarus phenomena. That one, the wife slapped him real well. And the following day she woke up. Are you listening to me? The following day she woke up and she went to, to see her father. I mean, the, I mean, I'm sorry. The man woke up and, you know, he, forget, he, he woke up and he went to see, the, the guy went to see his father. So when he was coming back, the guy had an accident and died. You know, I, you need to see the movie. The wife, thank you, my wife. The wife is always helping us. Hallelujah. You want to tell the story so I can relax? You need to say something. So what happened was uh, he and his wife had an argument of some sort, and the woman ended up slapping the man. And so um, in the morning, the wife woke up when she realized what she had done. She woke up, she apologized, begged the husband, but he was so upset. So he walked out of the house and went to see his father. And come, you know, after he left his father's house, coming back home, he got into an accident and the Lord took him to hell. And so um, this was in Rene Bonke. I'm sure some of you have seen the movie. This was in Rene Bonke's, uh, this was in Rene Bonke's uh, um, crusade. crusade. And so, when the man had an accident, he actually died, and they brought him into that crusade under the basement where the prayer warriors were praying for the crusade. And so, um, you know, the man, you know, I, I don't know what happened after then, but, you know, after Rene Bonke preached and said something, the man woke up, and he told of his experience in hell and how God had said that because he did not forgive. That's why God had to sh take him to hell to show him what happens to people um, when you don't forgive? Amen. Amen. Did we get that? Now are we going to forgive? Um, we are not telling that story that you hear it and you are not applying this. So you, can, you, you have no right to fight anybody. Amen. You go to a restaurant, you fight them. You go to a school, you fight them. At work, you are the one fighting them. Thank you. You are driving and you are upset. You know you need deliverance. People of God, if anybody is upset in this church, we need to really come down and talk to the person. That you are going to help with this attitude. The, the Lord has already, he came here to set us free. See, I'm free. That's why people are running away from the church. Because this, is too, this revelation is too much. Because if you are not born again, you cannot receive this message. Because God wants to give us what? A new spirit. If you don't have a different spirit, how are you going to walk in holiness? It's impossible. See, I have a different spirit. Look at, this is not about numbers. We like numbers because we feel good. But in the Old Testament, only two people made it to the, rest, to the, world, to the promised land. Because they refuse to do what? Surrender themselves. He said, a new commandment I give you. A new co Who is talking here? Jesus. 
It says that you love one another as I have loved you. That one should what? That also love one another. It's a commandment. It's a commandment. It's not a suggestion. And we try to justify ourselves. We try to justify ourselves. And the Lord said, get over it. What we are saying, God is not hearing it. Because how could Jesus left the whole, you know, the splendor, his glory, his throne. He left the angels and he came here, he humbled himself. And the Bible says, let this mind be in you. Uh, Philippians 5, uh, 2, is that 5? Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who did not consider it robbery to be equal with God. He made himself of no reputation. None. No title. He was not an executive. Not a president. Not a computer specialist. He had n- none. If, no, not even a carpenter. We are calling him a carpenter. He, was, didn't, do any, he didn't do any carpentry job. But we still say he was a carpenter. He came for a specific assignment, not a carpenter. If not so, they would have written, you know, the furniture that he, that he put together. He had no, can we say no reputation? So it's because of our reputation. That's why our shoulder is up. You will not listen. You will not repent. You will not forgive. You will not humble yourself. You will not submit. You will fight everybody. It's because of what? The title. Because you have arrived. In heaven, there is no title there. Everybody is serving over there. That's where we are going. There's no pastor, no bishop, no president, no grandmother. We don't have all that. There's no family coming together in heaven. I have it here. No marriage. We are going to be living like what? Like angels. So why are you going to plan to miss heaven? That's what I don't understand. Say, I love Jesus. Jesus. Say, Lord, help me to obey your word. word. That's it. How many points have I given you? Okay. Okay, four. To stop striving and start abiding. That's why we surrender. To stop what? Striving and start abiding. Ha! First Corinthians chapter 11, verse 16. It says, but if anyone seems to be contentious, argumentative, is that not the right word? It says we have no co- such word, custom, nor do the churches of God. God says what? If anyone seems to be what? Contentious. Contentious. It's not in this church. Amen. You see the instruction that God is giving us? Amen. And you say you are not aware of this? It's to really transform you. You look at yourself and say, oh, this is not me anymore. Something entered me. Mm, ha! I've been clothed with what? Okay. Jesus. He said, put on what? Put on the Lord Jesus Christ and not fulfill what? The, the lust of the flesh. We need to wear Jesus. When they see you, they see who? That's why we're here. And Apostle Suleiman was praying for people who are getting healed everywhere, everywhere. He was prophesying and all that. And the Lord showed him a vision. He said he saw everybody on the wheelchair. I was like, what kind of vision is this? He said, the people that you are praying for, they are healing. He said, they are not growing. At times, we want God to heal people. They heal, they heal them, they live. They, they don't have no nature of God. No passion for God. No desire. Say, Lord, help us. Yeah. So we need to know what we are doing. God is looking into our heart. Are you really for me? That's what God is looking for. At times, we are so busy, we are the first person to, last person to come to church, the first person to leave. 
As if we are doing God favor. You are doing yourself favor for coming to God. When I'm praying for you right now, I'm praying with tears. Because when you have the revelation of God, you say, why, why did you choose me? That you are fortunate for God to pick you up. And for you to be convicted, to be pursuing God, you are so blessed. Say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. We need to know how blessed you are. That you are not shaken by what is happening out there. We are, you are not moved by somebody's prosperity. If you are moved by that, you don't know what you are doing. Because if God has built a mansion for you in heaven, we are not talking about things. Here, they are all toys here. What we see here, they are, all, they are not real. And we are killing ourselves, we are frustrating ourselves because of the things that doesn't last. And this is what we are fighting for. We want to die to have them. Say, I love Jesus. Okay, another point here. Stop what? Striving and start what? Abiding. Now we need to look at abiding. Can we look at abiding? John chapter 15, verse 4. It says, abide in me and I in you. You see that? Abide where? So we need to stay in God. You see why we, you know, if we, for us to really examine ourselves, are we abiding in him? Is he abiding in us? You wake up in the morning, you have to think about him. See, the Lord is dealing with us differently. Because of the level of our, of our faith or our intimacy with God. Like my cousin, when she eats and she forgot, and she forgot to, to pray, she'll make sure she spill everything on the plate. You say, eh? What kind of eat food is that? I didn't pray. That's how the Lord was de- dealing with this lady. And then when you look at some people, the Lord, you know, how the Lord is dealing with them, he said, well, after they finished praying, and finished eating, they didn't give God thanks. And the Lord says, you finished eating, you didn't thank me. Have you done that before? And they will hear, you know, God speaking to their conscience that you finished eating and you didn't thank me. That's what what? Intimacy. This is, I'm talking about revelation of this. Because at times, this is too much for some people. Yeah. They, they expect you to lie to them. And they feel comfortable. Because their situation is what? Justified. What kind of preacher is that? Just telling you lies. I don't want to miss heaven because I lied to somebody. That's not going to happen. The founder has given us instruction. You give the message, back it up with the word. Salvation is what? It's personal. Whether you, if you don't want to go to heaven, that's your own business. Oh, I'll let you, I'll, I'll, I'll really, I'll, the Lord will help me to really present the word the right way. Because I don't want to miss heaven for anybody. And the way the society is going right now, so tolerant. I mean, when you see the, what is happening right now, and if somebody is not strong in the Lord, guess what? You'll be, you know, you'll be what? Distracted. And you'll be embracing what is not true. Because you have no strong foundation. We want to serve God based on somebody else's ideology. Not even in the Bible. I mean, I was ministering to somebody yesterday. He was, I mean, this guy looked perfect. He was telling me he's 90, he was uh, 89. I mean, he looks like, like 60 or 50 something. And I was trying to tell him that you need to really receive Jesus. I said, I'm Catholic. I've been Catholic since 1950 something. This guy refused to receive what I was saying. And he was encouraging me. He was like, when all these young people, they don't work anymore. And he was saying that, uh, uh, he said, at least they should find a religion, whether it's Muslim or Muslim. I'm like, I'm like, this is what you reduce to with your Catholic? 
That everybody should have what? A religion. That's deception. You see how people are deceived? That's why I'm talking about this message. That have, you, have we really surrendered to God? Because at times we are in church, but we are faking it. The truth is going for, but your heart doesn't want to receive it. And that's why most people, they go to the toilet. You see them just walking around. Because they don't want to receive it. That's the time you rise up and you go to the bathroom. Because what the pastor wants to say, you don't want to hear it. It's not relevant to you. It's not important. Because you have arrived. Say, Lord, help me. People of God, this church, as I'm pastoring, we want holy people. Amen. Look at God coming here to appear to us. I mean, we are having all kinds of testimonies. He's not moved by the crowd. He wants us to have what? The right heart. Amen. And we are believing this is going to be packed. Amen. Because I see it packed already. Amen. Amen. I'm believing God to give us Pastor Dina. Amen. Because Pastor Dina needs what? Need Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Let's, let's continue. Uh, fifth point, to lay aside affluence, influence, or notoriety. Philippians chapter 2, verse 7. Is this helping anybody? Yes, to lay aside affluence, Influence or notoriety. Hallelujah. Philippians chapter 2, verse 7. He said, but, you know, made himself of no reputation. I think I'll talk about this. Taking the form of a born servant, coming in the likeness of a man. Amen. Hallelujah. When you look at John chapter 3, verse 1, there was a man that in Nicodemus that he says this man, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night, by night. Look at the affluence, amen. Look at the man brought from what, uh, us, uh, obs obscurity to what, notoriety. He has arrived. He doesn't want to lose his title. And he sneaked to see Jesus at night. You see the problem now? So people will not know that he went to see who? Jesus. Yeah, you can read the rest. Hallelujah. Another point here, the boy, the, we surrender to seek God. Okay? And God demands us to come to him wholeheartedly. Amen. Wholeheartedly, with, you know, um, not to be half-heartedly uh, committed to God. Amen. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 13. It says, you will seek me and find me. You will seek me and what? Find me. You will seek me and what? Find me. Isn't that beautiful for us to seek God and find him? He said, when you search for me with all, not some, all your heart, I will be what? Found by you, says the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 If you really want to last with God, people of God, don't compromise. Even if we don't have anything to eat, because we compromise, because we're saying that, oh, this person is going to leave the church if I tell the truth. Let the person leave. I don't care about all that. If you really preach the gospel and please God, God will take care of you. Some, a lot of people have made these mistakes. You are, you are preaching the gospel, you know, to, to what? To compromise. You know, you, are, you, want, you want to please people, so you want to do it in a way. So you not offend people. Is it your instruction that you are speaking? So this is the glorious gospel. God has given the church. So we can walk by it. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse uh, 8. Is that number 8? No. 7? 
Okay. Matthew nineteen twenty nine. God wants us to really seek Him. Amen. It says, "Everyone who left, you know, houses, brothers, sisters, father, mother, or wife, and children or land, for my what namesake shall receive what a hundredfold and what in inherit what eternal life." We need to have sympathy with uh, Muslims. When they get saved, they kick them out. Yes. And they are so convicted because most of the time God will appear to them. Yes. So they cannot go back to the family. Yes. Yeah. I mean, this is how people sur they surrender totally. They are not playing games because there's nowhere to go back to. So we, we came from a family, you know, from Christian, you know, uh, what do you call it, household. We have no problem with the family for being a Christian, because they are Christians also. Yeah. But these people, they have no where to go to. And if they return, they will kill them. Yes. Hallelujah. So we can see the heart of people. Look at the word of God. That if you leave all these things, God says, you know what? You're going to inherit what? Eternal life. And God is telling us that what we're going to inherit is beyond this comprehension. You, when we get there, we're just going to be saying, wow. Yes. We're going to be saying, glory to God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Because we'll be speechless. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. Number eight. Why do we have to surrender to God? Seven? Okay, seven. You know, attitude destroys a person's inheritance in the kingdom. Attitude. People of God, this thing that we are, these schools that we are going to, we spend so much in the library that we are against the word of God. That's the problem. Because we have so much human wisdom that we want to really justify our case. Yeah. You know, that this situation, I'm so right. And God says, it's not in the instructions that I'm giving you. Study the instructions. Have the Holy Spirit to enlighten you so you can know what you are doing. Amen. So we thank God that we have what? The Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance. Because holy is holy, but we are not seeing him as holy. We are just seeing the Holy Spirit as a friend. Holy Spirit is holy. God is what? Holy. So he wants holy nature. He wants holy reflection. He requires what? Holiness when we stand before him. So that's why we have grace to walk our world. Salvation with fear and trembling. Hallelujah. Let's continue. Another point here is, uh, oh, Hebrew chapter 13, verse 5. Am I wasting your time? It says, let your, con conduct be uh, your conduct be without covetousness. Be content with such things as you have. For he himself, he himself has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Amen. God is saying what? He's reminding us to be satisfied with God's gifts and provisions. Amen. To be satisfied with what? God, God's gift and provision. So this life that we are living, if you are not satisfied with where you are right now, when another thing comes, you will never be satisfied. Let's, get, let's understand what we are doing. The, the position you are right now, if you are not satisfied, if something changes, guess what? You are not going to be satisfied. Because this life is not for us to be satisfied. The satisfaction is in God. The satisfaction is what? It's in God when you are in Christ. That's when we have our peace. And when you are in Christ, you lack nothing. Amen. Because the promise is going to do what? 
Supply all your needs according to what? His riches and in glory by Christ Jesus. Can we say hallelujah? hallelujah. People of God, I'm begging you, please, let's live by the truth. If you minister to somebody, don't sugarcoat what we are saying. You are not helping God. Amen. And your angels are disappointed when we are not speaking the truth. Because they are crying. They're standing there and they are, they, because they don't have any choice. They cannot compromise. They receive instruction from heaven. When they come down, what they know is to do the word. The word. They do what the instructions they have received. But we have a choice to resist God and do our own thing. You see the problem now? <sighs> Say hallelujah. And uh, verse 6, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 6. Can we say this together? One, two, three. So we may boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can a man do to me? How can we shout hallelujah? Hallelujah. Now the Lord is telling us that we have to say it how? Boldly. Boldly. Say it how? Boldly. Who is your helper? The Lord. And you will not what? Fear. What can, they, what can what? Man do to me. That's it. Hallelujah. We leave God and we kind of, we're trying to do our own thing. There are so many people that made this mistake. You are in church, you just leave God and you go and do your own agenda. And when you come back, you are totally finished. Because what you did is totally opposite the word. You are carrying your Bible, but you are not, you are not following the instructions of God. Say, Lord, help me. No, it's everybody, including me too. Because I'm going to stand before him, and you're going to stand before him. Amen. Hallelujah. John chapter 14, verse uh, 2. Is that the ninth point? Eighth point? Look, thank you. Number 10? Okay. 8, 10, it's okay. Praise God. Why do we have to surrender? God has prepared a mansion for you. You, are, you didn't hear that. God has prepared what? Yeah, for, you know, John chapter, John chapter 14, verse 2. He said, in my father's house there are many mansions. Many, many, many. We are not talking about the one that is cheaply constructed here. By KB Home. Amen. We're talking about the one that is constructed by what? Perfectly. Not with wood or not with all these materials that will decay. Amen. Precious what? Stones. Hallelujah. God has prepared what? Mansions for us. That's why we have to surrender. Amen. What If you see your mansion, you're going to say, whoa. whoa. Hallelujah. That's how good God is. Our God is what? So good. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, another point here. We need to intend. Yakanda uh, Basata. Why we want to serve? God wants to. Uh, want us to be sensitive, uh, be sensitive to spiritual blessings, amen. amen. To be what? Sensitive to spiritual blessings, amen. Because these are not something that you know you want to be playing games with. These are real things. These are not uh, you know something that we just say. You know what? You know uh, I'll manage it and you know I'll change it later on. No. Matthew chapter 19, verse 21. Amen. We see a man that went before the Lord. He was asking for eternal life. He was so excited. And the Lord was asking me, have you kept my commandments? He was talking to God, you know, with so much pride that he has done all. Amen. And, what, and when the Lord threw a question at him, he said, the Lord said to him, he says, if you want to be what? Perfect. Hello? If you want to be what? Perfect. This is a choice. Amen. 
That's why at times it's so hard for people when, we, when they say perfection, they say, no, 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 I don't want to do this. So we have to cry before God for God to convict them to come on board. Amen. It says, if you want to be what? Perfect. Go sell what you have, what you have and give it to the poor. And you will what? Have treasure in heaven. And come and follow me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, this man, when he kind of like assess all the cheap things that he, he had acquired, he thought he had more than God. He weighed what he had collected. Amen. He weighed what, all the riches that he, he had acquired. And he kind of like analyzed it. He said, no, 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 no. I don't want to follow you, Jesus. I mean, the king of kings is telling you that if you sow to his kingdom, he will give you hundredfold. He didn't see all that. He just saw himself. And he refused to do what? Surrender himself. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then you can read this point uh, for yourself uh, in Revelation chapter 22, verse 3. It was telling us, this is to get us excited that we are, uh, the Lord has prepared a new Jerusalem for us, a new city, a beautiful city, amen, in the book of Revelation. I'm looking at time. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. We are so going to be so blessed when we, see, when we get to this city. Amen. Hallelujah. And when you look at uh, uh, Revelation 22, verse uh, uh, 11, it says, Who is unjust? Let him be unjust. Still. He who is filthy, let him be what? Filthy still. So he who, he who is righteous, let him be what? Righteous still. And say, he who is holy, let him be holy. This is what God is conveying this to us. Amen. It's not for everybody. It's not for everybody. Because God is presenting. Look at G Judas was in the midst of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he was not interested. His heart was for the world, the natural things. The things that he could relate to. Even the Lord was saying all kinds of spiritual things. This is for us to learn that you can be in the midst of Jesus. At the same time, your heart is not for him. <laughs> So his heart was for the enemies. Those ones that are speaking against the church, he was thinking about them. He, was, he, he preferred to have what? Fellowship with them. So he disengaged himself from that fellowship and went his ways. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Look at Genesis chapter... 24 verse 7, to obtain favor from the Lord. Can we say favor from the Lord? We surrender to obtain favor for, from the Lord. You know, whatever you need, don't forget. Let's read this. Let's read this. Hallelujah. Now, this is the situation uh, re regarding uh, Abraham. Abraham, uh, you know, had a son, Isaac. And Isaac needed what? A wife. Amen. And the Lord instructed, I mean, Abraham instructed his servant to go to his uh, father's uh, house, you know, to the community that he came from, and to look for what? A spouse for Isaac. Amen. When you go down, he said, to, the descend, to, the, to your descendants, I will give what? This land. He will send his angels before you, and you shall what? Take a wife. Can we say take a wife? <laughs> take a wife from my son. From there, amen. So you can, I don't want to read the whole thing because of time. Now we see the point here that God has assigned an angel to help you. Amen. Instead of you trying to help yourself, let's come out of this helping myself, helping myself. Amen. There's an angel that will help, help you, but you, the point, you know, what we need to do, get on our knees and begin to ask God yes. to help you to get that thing. Amen. And the angels will go ahead and, and prepare the way for you so you can get the right word. Right thing. Amen. Amen. Even you are looking for a job. God will send an angel to go and, you know, go ahead of you to prepare the way for you. That's why he has sent an angel to each one of us. So when we surrender ourselves to him, we obtain what? Favor from the Lord. Can we say favor? Favor, favor from the Lord. See, I'm favored. I am favored. See, I'm highly favored. 
Yeah. We need to know this, that God is, doesn't want us to be uh, unfavored, but he wants us to be highly favored. You know, and he's going to prove to us when we surrender to him and ask him to direct our path. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Are we okay now? Amen. Do we want some more? Yes. Some of you want to go home. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not willing to surrender is an attitude. Mm. Yeah, not willing to surrender. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why at times people pack their bag and leave the church. What are you going to do? They pack their gun and they pack their purse and you just leave because they can't handle the message. Hallelujah. We have to tell the truth. Look at somebody say, We have to tell the truth. Amen. Do you want to hear this one? No affinity for God's purpose and agenda. Amen. We see why some people are it's so hard to surrender. Amen. Genesis chapter 14, 19, verse 14. When you look at the situation when the, uh, the God wanted to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, he shared his heart with, with Abraham because Abraham did what? Surrender himself to God. He was willing to do his will. Amen. And Lord, he says, the Lord went and spoke to his son-in-law, to his sons-in-law who had married his daughters. And said, get up, get out of this place. For the Lord will what? Destroy the city. But his son-in-law, but, he, no, but his sons-in-law, he seems what? To be joking. So at times when we are talking about the things of God, people are thinking we are joking. People are laughing. They're laughing at us. They're joking. They say, ah, oh, I don't care. But when you look at this story, we realize that uh, Lot had four daughters, not two. Because if, if they could, he had two daughters, virgin in the house that the, 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 the people wanted to mess with. At the same time, he went out. Uh, uh, Lot went out to his son's in-law's house to talk to those daughters that he married his son-in-law. Amen? And they were laughing at him. They were laughing at him. So it's sad for us to have a family. You are telling them the truth and they think you are joking because they are too familiar with you. At least familiarity will be thinking like, why is he talking to me like this? Yeah, isn't, isn't him, we both the same. And the Lord is changing us every day. Hallelujah. So the son-in-law, they were looking at him and say, you must be joking. We're not going with you. Amen. And guess what happened to Lot's wife? The Lot's wife heard an instruction that do not what? Look back. But she looked back. She looked back because of what? Those two girls. You know, this is woman for you. They was like, hey, my two daughters, they're still there. So we have to sympathize with this, you know, this situation, when we hear this story, we need to really sympathize you know, with them. Like, hey, with this lady, that this is what she did. She had to look back. But God does not care whether you look back. Or, he wants you to follow his instructions. Amen. This is not about looking back. It's about obeying what? That's why we compromise. We compromise because the thing is so dear to us. We are so touched emotionally that my own daughter, hello? And then she looked back. And the Lord turned out to what? A pillar of salt. He said, this one is not useful for salvation. God says, the person is not what? Useful for salvation. She became on this spot a pillar of salt. No, this pillar of salt, Deborah, you can't scrape it. You cannot use it to season anything. Now, I want us to think out if we are not surrendering to God, if we want to do our own thing, this is how God deals with people. But we thank God that we are in the New Testament, that God has given us grace to repent. So why are we going to fight God if we just to say repent and you are fighting? (sighs) 
I mean, we've seen nations wasted. That's why people, when they read Old Testament, anybody that you are ministering to or you minister to, please don't tell them to read Old Testament. <laughs> because when they read the Old Testament, they say, oh, no, 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 we don't want anything to do with Christianity. <laughs> if this God is like that, we don't want him. <laughs> That's what the guy told us yesterday. The guy I was ministering to, he said, I read the whole, you, know, you remember he said that? He said, I read the Old Testament. He said, if, if that is going to be that God, he said, no, I'm not interested. <laughs> and then we asked him, I said, did you read the Old New Testament? He said, no. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are, we, are we getting something out of this? Are you blessed? So the benefits of surrendering is what? God give us what? Eternal life. Amen. The benefit of surrendering is what? You know, we have, a, we have the Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance. Yeah, yeah. The benefit of surrendering is what? God forgives us for all our sins. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The benefits of surrendering is what? We can love again. Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 We can what? Love again. We can dance again. We can be joyful again. Hallelujah. Because he came to do what? To restore us. Back to the right fellowship with the Father. Shout hallelujah. Amen. I'm going to stop here because of time. Amen.